<laughs> time for real. <laughs> yep. Oh shit. Yeah, you got okay. It. okay, all right. Are you still working, Chuck? Hey, How are you? <laughs> Good to see you, man. There you are. Yeah, you might see some real advantages with this kind of instruction. <laughs> And unmute. Hello, Mr. Jordan. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Rokliff. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Good to see you, but I don't. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I should be seeing more people, right? Yeah. Golly, what happened to my thumb? <laughs> I got enough. <laughs> oh, yay. Hey, Marie, how are you? I'm good. Good. I finally coming. <laughs> good to see you, man. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, what can you guys see right now? You. Oh man, that, that must be extraordinary. I see a lag in your video. I'm sorry, what? I was seeing a lag in your video. Oh well, look at this instead. <laughs> there we go. That? Okay, now we're seeing that your notes. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Now, I'm in grid view, but I can only see six people. Well, it's got seven participants, right? You guys and me. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Jordan, this is my fifth Zoom meeting today. Woo. Wow. Somebody's working hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they, uh, you know, every time somebody talks, because I was talking to the head of uh, career technical education for the whole district, every time someone in charge talks they're talking about accountability right record keeping did you contact the uh students blah 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 because there's a bunch of students after three weeks they still haven't even showed up once that is correct yeah crazy yeah. so how you guys been crazy <laughs> yeah i'm stuck with my kids right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean it's got some advantages. I mean, I would I would rather I would rather you raise your kids than a professional educator, that's for sure. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's busy. <laughs> Wonderful. I told my son he was talking to me before I got on, and I said, "Okay, Thomas, stop." <laughs> ah, perfect. But he's perfect. fourteen, so right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, some teachers are getting there because the teachers are starting to uh, um, assign work and stuff like that, and <laughs> some parents are getting their kids to do the work, and some of them just aren't. Which is crazy. Some of them, yeah, very un undereducated people. Uh, they can't really get their kids to do their their homework online because they really don't know what they're doing or what. That's yeah. a good point. Or, yeah. 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 Well, my son just yeah. told me that it's easier because the teachers can't really give the information the way they want to give it. So he's like, it's kind of easier right now. Right. Well, for now. Yes, and we're that's, getting, comfortable with it. I understand that. Yeah, because we're getting probably a little harder for teachers. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, what? I said it's probably a little harder for the teachers right now. Yeah. Yeah, depending on how much of the stuff you've done already. Right. I mean, I think about this. My sister is a teacher for first graders. I can't imagine how they're doing this for first graders. Yeah. Zoom. <laughs> like, You'd be surprised though, those little kids have no computers already. <laughs> right. True, but they can't read the instructions, so I don't know. Parents have to be involved, I would think, but yeah. yeah. yeah I spent the whole morning with them for the internet class. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, see? Hanan, you you're dealing with that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Horrible. That's good. <laughs> okay. Well, according to, to according to, to Tomas, who keeps good notes, 
Um, according to Tomas, the last thing we talked about was the four stroke cycle. Is that the last thing in your notes as well? Yes, yeah, also the, the camshaft. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. That was on the 3rd of the 12th of 2020. We did talk about camshaft. Yeah, we talked about camshaft right after. And the fan, oh wait. Yeah, yeah, because here, here are my notes. I don't know, like my pictures, can you see it? No, I don't even know if I'm doing that right. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, okay. the last thing we talked about. Okay, so we yeah, didn't talk about timing belts, either. timing chains, stuff like that. So no. then you've already got mm -hmm. this. No. Right? I really, I really never recorded the the valve control flow though. I, yeah. I can't believe I got that right now. Okay. Well, we'll see how long it takes. You know, a couple more people to get on maybe before we hit it really hard. But um, I queued up this video, but you've already seen it. Um. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know if you guys got told, but the superintendent for the district uh, told us yesterday in an email that we're going to be out for the rest of the year. Which yes, sucks. we heard that. Well, actually, I heard it from my son's high school, so I figured yeah, it's something to do with me. Right. So, what does that mean? Well, you guys paid for a full semester, so um the principal of chafee adult school has made it clear that he's absolutely not opposed to doing some makeup sessions um if we can you know after the semester mm -hmm. you know nobody knows tomas your camera is awesome now uh yeah. nobody knows what you know where we are in terms of the life of coronavirus so um hopefully Hopefully, right after the semester ends, we'll just go back in the shop. Because um, I got a bunch of cars there that need to get fixed. Um, but I think uh, it's important. It's important that you guys are here so we can uh, maintain the the class. Because that's gonna be that's gonna be the key to. That's going to be the key to getting them to give us extra days. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Let's see what I got. Okay, Rudy just texted me. He'll be in. He'll be in quick. Where's all your buddies, folks? Where's your buddy, Chuck? I was trying to get Arnold to. Uh, he's got to create a Gmail account so he can get logged into the class. And then he has to download the Zoom. You don't have to download the Zoom. You can just uh, you can just uh, um. <clears throat> right, right. But your links, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, go to Zoom.com, right? Right. Yeah. I had to download it. I did, but I didn't need it for another group that I'm in. And then right. the Zoom.com with the what the class code or whatever. It's easy. Right. right. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to download it, but they ask you to download it first of all. Yeah, I I did yeah, that. And then right after that, I put the password in, and it worked. So right, who knows? So um, the last day of class is May fourteenth, which gives us pretty much six sessions and tonight. So we'll have to see. Rudy, you here yet? Uh. Let's see. Does the video work? Yeah. God damn it. Okay. Put a shirt on, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Matt, I Matt just asked about that. Very disturbing. <laughs> Incidentally, when right, you did that up. with a whole bunch of high school students, that was even more disturbing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what did I do? Yeah, you froze it up, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely cover uh, a bunch of subject matter tonight, but the most important part I thought was to make sure that you can get on Zoom and uh, you know, start, start learning the process because 
this, this, this is where we're going to be for the next couple of months. Arnold Vasquez. Okay, so that is meeting number 500 245 942. Password 489826. You don't need to download, just join. Oh, but you need the, the an email address to sign in. Right. <coughs> Do you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, the Zoom. Come yeah. on, man. It's 2020, man. You don't have an email address yet? What the hell? Stretch <laughs> turning there free. Where are you that the sun's still out? Oh, I guess it is, huh? That's nice. <laughs> Great. I need a cutter for this. <laughs> I oh, think I know broken. what's coming. Go in the room. Hey, you can't smoke at school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in school, so. <laughs> uh, yep. Hi. 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 How are y'all? Good, how are you? Another wonderful night. Yeah. <laughs> Just got Ooh. back from a, from a nice long cruise. Nice long what? Weren't you babysitting? Oh. Yeah, you're not going to Alabama now? Uh, I went and came back already. Oh, that was quick. Yep. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I heard that they were possibly staying down in the airport, I called the airlines and changed my return flight. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah, because I'm not getting stuck in Alabama. Oh, don't worry. They're letting people come back from all over the world right now. My mom's friend just came back from Australia, and they didn't even take her temperature. Nice. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hilarious, because when I flew back, I flew back on a plane that seats like 160 people, and there's only probably 60 of us on the whole flight. Nice. <laughs> Sit in first class? Yeah, most, of them, most of them were... Uh, Pilots and stewardess hopping on a ride. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the airports are still open, but they're really empty. Yeah. yeah. They were making comments that they were shutting down the airport. So when I heard that, I quickly called the airlines and transferred my flight. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, because I didn't want to get stuck out there. <laughs> gotta, gotta stay home. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it say? Have you guys? I, been to, <laughs> have you guys been to the classroom yet? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Rudy, are you wearing the same shirt I am? No. Well, I'm wearing my Santiago. Bible camp shirt. Okay. Well, from 2017. Okay. Arnold says I need the class code. Class code? Yeah, what's the class code? That's the Is 500. That the... That's the 500 245 yeah. 942. There you go. 500 245 942. Yes. Yeah. All right. And there's also oh, a password. Hooray! But then Hooray. he gets Well, what's up, young people? <laughs> Jimbo, you're muted out. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, I just barely got back from... We took a ride up to... Uh, Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and then Lake Havasu. I mean, not Lake Havasu, Lake... Uh, Isabella. Hughes. Hey, get your ass back mm. in this yard. <laughs> Dead dog. There you go. Junior! <laughs> oh. 
Get get the leash and go. Well, I don't know. Um, oh, I left it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I can't stand to be at home. Yeah, it's gonna be that way for a minute. Yep. yep. Can you guys see that chat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you would, if you could sign in. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? Are you on Google Classroom? Question mark. No. I think Arnold's on. I think Arnold's on Google Classroom. Oh. Yeah, that good What's your Google Classroom code, Dave? Google Classroom code is H H three X C three S. Yeah. yeah what's got, going on? Google Classroom and your Zoom. Right. <laughs> hey, we're on Zoom. Jim Knott, what's going on? Jim Knott, you must speak. Hey, Matt Jordan, how do I get back to grid view? Uh, it's up in the corner. <laughs> Not up in my corner. Upper right hand corner, right? Not up there. Not up. Manage participants. I only have choices of speaker and gallery view. What up, Matt? What's up, Rudy? Long time no see, bro. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but I was representing. You like that, Rudy? Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> that's right. He's representing. Boy, that's my, one of the OG ones. Died. Too. Died. That's died. My, my shirt finally died. I have more. I wore it so much I put holes in it. Yeah, I have more. <laughs> Believe that. Well, I have more. Take it back. You know I need a triple X. Yeah, and you know I got a bunch of those uh, orange long sleeve shirts. You like those? Hell yeah. Yeah, those are great shirts, aren't they? Especially during winter. Yeah, they're good for sleeping in. No, I can't do that. Oh, God, please no. No, I'm so <laughs> <Details>. sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry I went there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the point I was trying to make was, um, yeah, we're going to try to do makeup sessions later, but in order to do makeup sessions later, I got to have big uh, participation throughout the rest of the year. We'll just make the best of it. Yeah. Okay, so according to my good friend Arnold, he is on, but he's on Google Classroom. Now you need to get Zoom. on Google Camera. Zoom. Camera. Camera. Well, turns out Zoom is not Google. Nope. All right. Let's see. Huh. You know, the Somebody part has is, a lot of noise in their background. Did everyone get on the chat? Did everyone sign in? Uh, I think I did. I don't know I don't if that's how you wanted it. Oh, I didn't do that. Do I have to do that on Google Classroom? Well, yeah, you can do it here too. It's good practice. I can. Okay. I don't think I can do that out right now. <laughs> Participants, right? Wait, just click on participants. To sign on your yeah. screen, what? what are you showing? Oh. oh. Hmm. 
Ready. Now, can you message Bye. each other, or you can can you only message the whole group? Okay, okay, do it. Just jump, jump. Let's go. We're all on Zoom. Come on, come on, Carrie. Somebody getting a lot of noise in the background. <laughs> Let's I go. know it's me. Yeah. That's why I milk my Mac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What some people do is they mute they mute themselves unless they got something to say and then they um then they press the space bar and that'll unmute you. Yeah. Try that. Make sure if it you're works. on a if you're on a laptop. What are you saying, Rudy? I'm on a smartphone. You don't have a space bar. You have a mute button though. So what you gotta do about you gotta do it with your finger then? Yeah. yeah. Huh. You just hit the mute button, Rudy. Hey, you got me? Mute yeah. back. Gotcha. But we're uh, staring okay. at it. Ben's who you are. <laughs> so Chuck, can you change your username? Yeah. I I uh I never named my computers anything. That's why it's Toshiba computer. Yeah, but Zoom, <laughs> Zoom allows you to change your name. Rudy, yeah, Rudy, I'll, Rudy. I'll, uh, well, you, uh, you want okay, me to do that right now? Yeah, yeah, you have, you have to sign in the, the, the sheet. You have to sign in the sheet. Uh, oh, Rudy, yeah. Rudy, yeah. Do it. How do I sign on I think, to the sheet on this Zoom? Yeah, I did Is that. Wayne? Or do I have to go to Google Classroom? No, oh, you need to go. Oh, there you go. One or the other would be sufficient. Do it on here would be my preference, but I, I, don't, I don't know there. I'll have to figure go it out. Down to participate. Right. And you can click on chat. And I then don't you'll see. see Everything that everybody's up. put in. So you just type in your name or what? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But wait, I don't it. see that, but anyway. Well, really see, I see that. It's hard for me because I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> so I'm on a tablet. But you could see uh, like a little bubbles that show like dots in it. It says no, I don't have that at all. <laughs> hey, can I do a tire rotation tonight? Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I rotate my tires everywhere I go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jim. So, hey, Jim, Jim, are you still doing sales? What? Jim, are you still doing sales? Yeah. Well, then, are you using Zoom a lot? No, I never use it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you're using it now. <laughs> I'm using it now. Okay, who is Gallery S10, Galaxy S10 Plus? That's, That's probably, probably me. me. That's probably me. Me, Jim. Well, so you're not Jimbo? Oh, yeah, could be Jimbo, too. Yeah. Well, type something in the chat, and then we'll know who you are. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm Galaxy X10 because I started on the computer, and then you couldn't hear me, so I, I got off the computer, and now I'm on Galaxy S10. I'm on my phone. So, Jimbo. Yeah. Okay, so if I, if I assign you a new screen name, yeah, do you see that? Who's SMT550? I'm 550. Is that Anna Marie? Yes. T550, is that me? I'll figure it out to put my name on, but I probably won't do it right now. <laughs> is that correct? Is that oh, correct? okay, you did it. Okay, great. Okay. Great. That's one end, though. I'm sorry? One, one end. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd spell it wrong, but I didn't know how. But okay, but it's good. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there, right, we there we go. go. There you go. Okay, so you well, can like do I that. Said, I don't care what you call me as long as you don't call me late for dinner. Yep. 
as long as, you, and as, long as, we, as long as we call you, right? Yep. Yeah. Have you seen the restaurants? Man, I'd hate, I'd hate to be a waitress these days. Well, they're all yeah. shut down. Right. Yeah. They're not allowed to hold, have anybody in the restaurant. Yeah, but at least they place. still have a job because they're able to yeah. do takeout orders. Yeah. So Norm's has a very place. short menu now. Yeah, limited. Yeah, right. Don't can know if having the one. Can you get a short stack of pancakes off the short menu? I believe so. Okay. Well, Jerry just texted me. You got a short stack on a short menu. You're in good shape. You know, Jerry's working 13-hour days now. I think he gets off at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll see. Is that you? Okay. Well, good. You got everyone's name changed. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. So, Thank you. Is it true that you guys already have these drawings? Yes. Not this one. I have yeah, the top got, part somewhere. I, I got it from two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world, buddy. Welcome to my world. Uh, well, I think I got I think we got a crew now, so let's try something. Um every valve does the same thing, right? Every valve controls flow. That's all valves do. Now if you want to understand how a valve works in an engine, just think of a door in uh, going to a room, right? The door opens and closes and allows flow in and out of the room. Maybe you should join. Now, if you have a bigger valve, is that going to allow more flow? Yeah. Yes, it's like having a bigger door. Yep. Let's review. Um, on the intake valve, what is flowing past that valve? Air or air and fuel. Or, or fuel. Yeah, air, fuel yeah. sure. air and fuel, if it's a gasoline engine and uh, just air, if it's a diesel engine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's flowing past the uh, exhaust valve, though? Burn yes. air and fuel. Vapor? Yeah, because I, I don't, I don't yes. remember how, I don't, I don't know how much you guys remember from three weeks ago. That's why I kind of wanted to get started. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's flowing past the exhaust valve is smoke, right? The byproducts of combustion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Burnt air and fuel. You guys got your notebooks? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Well, now this stuff down here, I just wanted to kind of show you the layout. See, I ran out of space for the valve, but that's a valve spring. A lot of people don't understand what the valve spring does. All the valve spring does is closes the valve and holds the valve closed. So, what controls the valve? Cam. The, the camshaft. Cam camshaft, right? The yeah. flecha de levas. The shaft of lifters. Yeah. Yeah, the camshaft the is going to control the valve. And the camshaft is going to open the valve, but the Valve spring is what actually closes the valve. Now, is it important that that valve closes tightly? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's be, right? And the reason it's got to be is because if it's not, we're going to lose compression. <laughs> Plus, you know, you're going to have a big explosion inside the cylinder pretty soon. And if you have that big explosion and there's some way for that flame front to get out, you could blow your intake manifold off. In fact, we see that a lot on uh, like uh, dragsters blown drag, uh, alcohol nitro dragsters mm -hmm. you see them when they blow the the supercharger right off the top yeah that's because the explosion got out of the combustion chamber hey what's at the bottom what's the what's at the bottom of the combustion chamber oil mm. I don't know. Let's let's go back. Uh, what is, crank why, is it called, why is it called the combustion chamber anyway? The piston is at the bottom. Of the where the chamber. combustion occurs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Piston is at the bottom of the combustion chamber because the combustion chamber basically is um, the cup that's in the 
head that has the valves in it. And that's about it. Uh, what goes between the block and the um, head? Valve cover gasket. No. Oh. Ah. Yeah, maybe that's a question. Yeah, maybe, yeah, it's a trick question for Michelle. Oh, yeah, head gasket, I meant. Head gasket. Head gasket. Oh, Good, there you go. Wonderful. All right, so what do you know about head gaskets? What do you remember? <laughs> it's made of metal. Yeah, well, well actually, it's, it's a sandwich gasket, right? It's made mm -hmm. of different materials at different levels. Like it's going to be steel to make it strong, but then you got to put a bunch of other materials on it so it'll still seal. Are head yeah. gaskets a big problem? Yep. They sure can be. What are the. Hey, Chuck. Yes. Chuck, how are yes. you doing, bud? I'm doing fine. I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you getting the video? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. So, what do you see in the video right now? What do I see? I see a drawing, and uh, I see uh, one, two, three, four, plus my, myself on the video, little squares like uh, Partridge Family. Right. Do you see me? <laughs> do you see me? Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch, Brady Bunch <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, Brady Bunch, right. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> yeah. You guys didn't even notice I shaved my beard. What the hell? <laughs> oh, it looks nice. <laughs> yeah. That was the biker look was cool for a while, but yeah. you, know, you got to do, you got to try to act nice at least. Um, okay, so head gasket. When the head gasket fails, what are your most likely symptoms going to be? Smoking. Smoking. Or, no overheating. Compression. Overheating, yeah. The classic symptom of a head gasket failure is overheating. Now, why? Well, for one thing, when the pressure in the cooling system is higher than the combustion chamber, you're going to get water in the combustion chamber. But when the pressure in the combustion chamber is higher than the cooling system, you're going to get all gas. kinds of pressure in the freaking cooling system, and the cooling system won't be able to take it. Okay. In hot, ga in hot gas, right? Or in hot gas and hot yeah, gas. And absolutely. Cool. I'm looking at yeah. your fan. Yeah. Now, they make a... Uh, you got a fan? No, I'm, somebody's camera is pointed at their ceiling. Oh, yeah. I think that's Jim, isn't it? Oh, is that me? See how yeah. you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. How's, handsome face. how's that? That's, how a, that's that? the dish keeping me warm right there. How's that? <laughs> Can't oh. see you. I guess. Yeah. Well, we'll just leave the fan there for you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, there's a chemical that they make that uh, reacts with combustion gases. So what you end up doing to test to see if you got a bad head gasket is you take the radiator cap and you kind of suck gas, not fluid, but mm -hmm. you suck gas into this thing. And if it changes colors, that shows you got combustion gases in your uh, head gasket. So you have what? Cooling combustion system. gases in your cooling system. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay. So my question is, what do you do about a bad head gasket? Go down. <laughs> First search is buy, buy a new car. That is probably correct, Jim. That's probably correct. That's my answer. Because the problem is, I mean, if you look at a modern engine with all the modern electrical components on it, do you really think some guy that makes minimum wage is going to be able to pull out that engine and put it back in without breaking a bunch of stuff? No. Uh, nope. No. Yeah. No. And, then, and then if something doesn't work, is he going to be able to diagnose it and tell you whether it's the engine that's got the problem? No. Nope. No, he's going to take right. your money, though. That's for sure. So when it comes to head gaskets, I just say, nah, uh, there's hardly any cars in the world that are worth that. Okay. Now, I might change the engine in a freaking Corvette, but that's only because I've got, you know, free labor and I can do it. And you got, you got millions. Yeah. 
we are free labor. When are you guys going to put yeah. the trans back in my red Corvette? <laughs> yeah. Well, we can get back into the classroom to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like next year. <laughs> yeah, really. No, nah, this summer, man. Summer. Summer. I don't I think, know. You know, when the, when the all clear sounds, people are going to be raring to be productive again. Make, yeah. things, make good things happen, you know. Maybe. So I know I am. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so why are you going to get rid of a car? Yeah, Father Joe's. Why are you going to get rid of a car that has a head gasket issue? Because it probably won't get fixed. Well, you may, well, yeah. you may have cracked the engine. Yep. Uh, yeah, Jim's absolutely right. Yeah. Jim's absolutely right. You could you could have cracked heads instead of just a bad head gasket, and then you're mm -hmm. talking about well, because the thing is, if you're going to change the head gasket, you're probably going to machine the heads, right? And that's mm -hmm. yeah, five hundred yeah. bucks just by itself. Yeah, you got to the flex the heads. Yep. yep. And if you go to a place that sells replacement cylinder heads, they're probably welding up these heads and just machining them which means what rudy next time it gets hot guess what next time it gets overheated it's going to melt the weld yep going to break the weld uh, because these guys are not great doesn't, it have, to, doesn't it have to be like really smooth too it has to be like totally precise yeah no. totally. yeah yeah machining it down is easy they know how to machine it so it's perfectly smooth it's the yeah. problem is when they weld them up if they're not using the right temperature and the right fill, filler material, as soon as that thing hits up, that no. crack's going to either expand or crack again off of that crack. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. So you end up chasing a crack so you give up and just buy the brand new heads or get rid of the car. Get rid of the yeah. car, right? So it's mm -hmm. like... I just get rid of the car and cut out the middleman of giving this guy two thousand dollars to right. wreck my engine. Okay. Hey, Mike, you look better there, bro. Everybody remember the four-stroke cycle? Yeah. What is yeah. it? It's um. Oh gosh. <laughs> I know the last one's exhaust. Hang on. Compression. Yeah. Power. Power exhaust. And exhaust. Good. Okay, so on the intake stroke, what's the direction of the piston? Down. Down. South. Down. Down is correct. Good. Because the purpose of the intake stroke is to suck air and fuel into the cylinder. Yes? Mm -hmm. and yes. It's like a syringe, right? What we're going to do is we're going to pull the piston down, and it's going to suck air and fuel into the cylinder. Okay, so what's the next open intake valve. Compression. The intake valve is open, right? You've got that little grid I made you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. What's the next stroke? Compression. Compression, Compression stroke is correct. Compression. Now, what's the no. direction? Up. Traveling up. vertical. Up. up. Uh, which valves are open? None. Good. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the point of the compression it better stroke? Better be. Yeah, better. <laughs> What's the point of the compression stroke? To compress, compress, air fuel compress the, the, the air in the fuel. Yeah, we got to compress air in the fuel, but why are we doing that? What do we do? Because it changes its properties to where it can ignite. Right? So it can ignite better, right? Yeah. yeah. Because when the fuel comes out of the injector, it's actually little droplets. Well, liquid fuel won't burn. So we use the compression stroke to increase the temperature in the cylinder so much that all of that gas just vaporizes. And, you know, vapor, vaporized gas is extraordinarily uh, combustible. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. What happens right. at the end of the uh, compression stroke? The spark plug fires and we get the power stroke. Spark plug fires. Hmm. What does the spark plug do? It ignites, it ignites the air fuel. The fuel. Ignites the air fuel mixture. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what system is the spark plug part of? Ignition system. Ignition. Good. Very good. Wonderful. Yep. Okay, so the spark plug fires. Now we got a big explosion. What does that big explosion do? Drives the cylinder downward. 
Drives the what downward? The cylinder. The piston. The piston. Or the, yeah, the piston. Go. Okay, same thing. Okay. Drives the no, piston down not. in the cylinder. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right. Now, at the bottom of the piston, well, first of all, the piston has rings. What do the rings on the piston do? It seals the it seals up against the wall so the gas can't escape. Good. Now there's three rings on a gasoline motor, right? Three rings Correct. on a gasoline motor piston. What mm -hmm. are they? Two compression the rings. The top, one, ring. the, the top one, one, the bottom one, the middle one. Good. Good. Two compression the rings and an oil control, control ring. Okay. Now. Your top is your compression ring. Top two are compression rings. Okay, top two are compression mm -hmm. rings, and the bottom one's the oil ring. Mm -hmm. Yes, oil control ring. Which, is it stopping which, which oil one? from going down or coming up? Uh, coming, up. Yeah. coming up. Good, 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 good. Now, when that oil control ring goes bad, what's your symptom? Smoke. Oil oil oil. Blue smoke. 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 Good. Now, here is the expert question. What color smoke when you lose oil control ring? Blue. 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 Good. Gray blue. Uh, Good. Okay. Hmm. Now, we talked about 10 minutes ago about the head gasket going bad and water mm -hmm. getting into the cylinder. If the water gets into the cylinder and we have combustion, what happens to the water? Vaporizes. Vaporizes. It turns to steam, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why if you blow your head gasket or have a cracked head, and it goes into the combustion chamber. What kind of smoke comes out the exhaust? Steam. White. White. Yeah, it's steam. Good. That's always the first question on the A1 ASE test. They're going to ask you what the color of smoke means. Now, while we're on that topic, and just to finish it, are you guys taking notes? Yes. Oh, while yes. we're on that topic, just to finish it, there's another color of smoke that you can get from an engine, and that's black. black. Black smoke comes out of the exhaust, tells you what? Oh, You're rich. Running too rich. rich. There you go. You got too much okay. fuel. Good. Okay. Why don't you tell me how much fuel, how too much fuel got in the engine? Bad injector. Good. What else? Uh, mismap on your uh, fuel timing. Hmm. Bad air filter. Well, on an old car, it would be a bad air filter. But remember, if you've got a clogged air filter, what's a modern engine going to do? Compensate. It's going to compensate, yeah, because what, what's going to happen is a dirty air filter is going to shut down the amount of air that's coming in, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is if you end up having a rich mixture inside the combustion chamber, what's going to happen is the exhaust is going to come out, go past the exhaust uh, uh, oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor is going to report to the computer, hey, you got too much fuel. And as a result, what's the computer? Watch this. What's the computer going to do? Lean it out. Oh, lean it down. Oh, damn, I haven't taught in a long time. <laughs> Thanks, for being here, guys. Thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. It's nice to get back home. <laughs> okay, so. The <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Is the uh, oxygen sensor going to uh, lean out the mixture? No, but it's going to tell the computer that it's running rich, and then the good. computer will lean it out. Good, good. Everybody got that? Yeah. Yep. Repeat it. Now, so I'm, what I'm doing is... The oxygen sensor will tell the computer that it's running rich, and the computer will then lean out the mixture so that it comes into a better line. Okay, gotcha. Which Thanks. one, upstream or downstream? Usually okay. upstream will report it, downstream will verify it. Nope, what does the downstream catalytic converter, I mean, what does the downstream oxygen sensor do? It only does one thing. Re reads the cat. Yeah, it's, it just uh, checks to make sure the catalytic converter is working. You know, I bought the stupid Suburban, and I was coming down from freaking Hesperia and uh, got a P0430 catalytic converter mm. bank too, mm. jackass. I knew, I knew it. 
you don't go long distances to buy cars. Don't do it. So he knew that, but oh, incidentally, Rudy, I didn't show you that Suburban's got a TV in it. Yeah. How much you want to give me for that TV? <laughs> Nothing. I want to buy the whole Suburban. Okay, four thousand bucks, and it's yours. Shit, I wish I had it. Did you sell that Cobra yet? Nope, not yet. But I got someone who's interested in it over at Darko. Did you and sell the Corvette yet? Nope, ain't sold that one yet either. You know, that's a great car. I've just been driving it around for the last couple of weeks. It's just a fabulous car. Just a wonderful car. You know, yeah, if you don't mind people. the windows not coming down. <laughs> I don't. And for See, two I, people. I was just this far away from getting that fixed, too. This far, I tell you. <laughs> God damn it. Like, God knows I don't want to do that kind of work myself. Hey, Rudy, when are you going to come over and do my brakes? Drum win. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, I'll be over tomorrow. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, so the oxygen are going to be I just yeah. don't like doing them. Yeah. Oh, they're big. Got some big face. <laughs> so my point was the oxygen sensor is going to report to the computer, the PCM, powertrain control module, that you have a rich mixture. The PCM is going to hey. respond. Oh, yeah. PCM's so sorry. PCM is going to respond by leaning out the mixture. But how does the PCM lean out the mixture? Shortening the pulse width of the injectors. Shortening the pulse width of the injectors. Are you ready, folks? This is the sentence that you need to understand, and then it makes it easy. Air fuel ratio is controlled on. Cars with electronic fuel injection by the mm -hmm. computer. Mm -hmm. By varying the amount of time the injector is held open, which is called pulse width and measured in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to know. Now you can be a rich, a rich mechanic, I guess. <laughs> um, how many milliseconds are in a second? A hundred? No. Uh, <laughs> how many milligrams are in a gram? A thousand. You better know that. Damn it. <laughs> it's a thousand. How many millimeters are in a meter? A thousand. A thousand, a thousand is correct. Milli means one thousand. Thank you. Yep, like millivolts. How many millivolts are in a volt? A thousand. A thousand. thousand. <laughs> okay. Well, it may seem that we're doing, you know, basic review tonight, but we really are because this has been a shock for everyone. Yeah. God, I, I didn't realize how much I missed teaching. That's hard to believe. It's like missing root canals. Or... Everyone's in a oh, yeah. It's like missing getting your face smashed with a hammer. Or Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Okay, so where's Arnold, man? He gave up. Yeah, must have. Shoot. Well, we'll get him next time. Okay, so I don't think I have a phone number. I would text him the invite. Oh, oh, oh like invite him? Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. I don't know how do you do that? Hey, Matt, don't I have an invite thing around here somewhere? Yeah, on the uh, bottom. Uh, yeah, no, in participation. On the bottom, on the bottom. Uh, yeah, there was five there. Oh no, it's on. It's on the three dots. Um, Chuck, do you have uh, his email, Gmail, or Yahoo mail? Who, me or Arnold? You. Oh yeah, do you? Have yeah, Arnold? I got. I have Gmail, sure. Yeah, but you don't have Arnold's. No, he's creating one right now. As a matter of fact. Okay. Is he over at your house? No, he, he lives about uh, three miles from me. Well, that might be a good way to do it. Why it can't be done by like cell phone or? No. It has to be. Oh, okay. It's all email. I, I can text him. Text him and see if he can Tell him to come over. We're so consistent. Yeah, over. can. <laughs> if you want. Okay, so we're talking about the power stroke. What are the valves doing? 
Open the door. Both valves oh, are no, open. Oh, on the power stroke. Okay, yeah, they're open. Yep. Nobody can hear me. Get out. Which direction is the piston going? <laughs> Down. 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 Okay, so we've got three rings on the piston, and the piston is connected to something with a with a pin. What connecting is the piston rod, right? connected to? Wrist connecting rod. The yeah, rest, the yeah, the wrist pin connects the piston oh. to what? The connecting rod. The connecting rod. Good. Okay. So the connecting rod connects what to what? The crank to the piston. The crankshaft. The crankshaft to the piston, yeah. Okay. So on the power stroke, the explosion and the expanding pressure is gonna push that piston down. Since it's connected to the crankshaft, it's gonna make the crankshaft spin, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is that the only stroke that makes the crankshaft spin? No. You sure? I'd say no. I don't know. See your, see that grid I made? Remember the chart I made? It says ICPE on top. It's in your notes. Oh, I haven't said that in three weeks. <laughs> 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 yes now is yeah. the power stroke going to speed up the crankshaft or slow it down speed it up it's going to speed it up yeah what other stroke speeds up the crankshaft compression no compression slows it down a lot okay does the intake stroke speed it up or slow it down Lost. slow it down, slow it down. Yeah, because it takes work to suck that piston, right? Now, is the exhaust yep. stroke going to add power or require power to accomplish? Require power. Yeah, because you got to push that piston up and get all the smoke out, right? So we've got yep. three strokes that do nothing but slow the crankshaft down. We've got one stroke that speeds it up. What's that stroke? Power, power stroke. Power stroke. stroke. Good, okay. Okay, power stroke, yeah. All right. So piston's going down on the power stroke. What's the next stroke? Exhaust. Exhaust. Yep. So on the exhaust stroke, what's the piston direction? Up. 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 Good. And the exhaust valve is open. And the exhaust valve is open. So we've got all the smoke in the cylinder because we just burned it, all the fuel. And now we're pushing out that exhaust through the exhaust valve into what? Debbie. The exhaust manifold. Exhaust manifold is correct. Good. Okay. So goes from the exhaust manifold to the what? Tailpipe. No, catalytic, what the hell? catalytic converter. Catalytic converter is correct. Good. What's the catalytic converter going to do for us? Going to cook the gases. Yeah. Go. Good. It's going to reduce the emissions. Dioxide, monoxide to dioxide. Yep. It's going to turn the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. And it's going to turn the. God, I'm so old. Yeah. HCs. <laughs> it's going to turn the HCs into water, right? What make, What's water made of? Hydrogen and oxygen. Good. Hydrogen and oxygen. Now, we have oxygen left over from the combustion process because we don't have complete combustion. That's why a lot of times people will measure the oxygen content of the exhaust to see how efficient the combustion is. But we got oxygen left over. And, you know, CO2's got two oxygens, right? Yes. CO2's got two oxygens. So we got oxygens there. And we use the hydrogen to make uh, water, which is why on a car that has a catalytic converter, if I see water coming out of the tailpipe, what do I do? Turn it off? Nope. <laughs> Car's got a catalytic converter. It's Mix got it water with scotch. Coming out of, pardon? Mix it with scotch. <laughs> doing his job. <laughs> catalytic converter's doing his job. Catalytic converter is doing its job. Thanks, Chuck. That is correct. Yeah, that's normal operation. It's supposed to do that. Okay, so I come out of the catalytic converter and I see the second oxygen sensor. 
They call that the downstream oxygen sensor, or they would call it uh, B1S2 or B2S2. Hey, incidentally, B1S1, what does that even mean? B1S1. B1S1. It's in your notes. Bank one sensor one. Bank one sensor one. That is correct. Oh. So if you have a inline engine, you're only going to have one bank. It's called, you know, it's like a bank, like a like a bank of computers, I suppose, or a snow bank. Yeah. Okay. So bank one's good. If you have a V motor, you're going to have one bank on one side and one bank on the other side. Makes sense. So if you have a V motor, you're going to have bank one, sensor one, bank one, bank two, sensor one. What do the front oxygen sensors do? What do both sensor S1s do? It tells the computer whether the mixture is rich or lean. Good. Okay. What do both S2s do? Tell the computer if the cats are good or not. Yeah, tells the computer if the catalytic converters are good or not. Um, now, how it does that is by comparing the signal. It does that by comparing the signal going into the catalytic converter and then comparing the signal coming out of the catalytic converter. And if the catalytic converter is doing its job, they'll be very different. That's how it works. <laughs> What up, Matt? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let me send an email for a minute. Now, of course, I've forgotten how to invite people, but there it is. Gmail. It is Gmail. God damn it. Oh. You did it, not me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What happened? How do I get back, Matt? Where do you want to get back to? Looks like you haven't done anything. Okay, can you see my this verify it's you thing right now? Uh, I see your paper with your valve stem picture. Really? And oh, you, that's right. That's right. Matt, because you click on the because uh, you're not seeing this. You switch to the rotational camera. Now, can you see verify it to you? Yes. So what happened? What? Yes, I see verify it to you. Okay. Well, shoot. What happened? Doggone it. No. What? Do I have to invite him now? I mean, Chuck, is he getting on? Uh, no, I just... uh. You asked what his email was. I just I just got it for you. Okay. Oh, dude, why are we on your calendar? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm just pointing out that we've got last day of class is May 14th. So we've all got six questions left after the night. <laughs> then I was going to show you this, but, you know, you've already seen it. So, no need. All right, so I go to stop share. Oh, whoa! How did that happen? Now I got now I got the grid view with everyone's picture. Jimbo, Juventino Rivera. Stop sharing. Uh, you need to get shoes on and pick up all this poop. You so have to. What the hell? Stop sharing. Dave. Good. So, Anna Maria, is it starting to make sense yet? What is what the the way this works? Yeah, is it working? I'm getting there. Okay. But Tomas don't test. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Tomas is getting to be a freaking expert. He's been here every day this week. Hey guys, I incidentally, while we're on that topic, I don't think I'll be doing office hours tomorrow. So, incidentally, guys, if you want, I do office hours every day except Friday, 12:30 to 1:30 right here the same address same password so if you want to hang out if you want to practice your zoom if you want to uh if you want me to help you get through any problems or whatever that's where we're going to be and that way you don't have to leave the house so it's office hours, 
What's it? Unless what? you want to leave the house. <laughs> Why would you want to leave the house? It's got everything. Because sometimes you just got to get away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it, Matt. Guys, uh, Matt's uh, used to be a student of mine just like you guys, but uh, the important thing about Matt is he's a teacher now, so he's helping He's helping me with the student view because I i don't know from this end what it looks like on the student end. So he's helping me with that. We're, uh, we're uh, helping each other get good at this because this is going to be the way for a long this time. This is going to be the new norm for a while. Yeah, at least six weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So that's good. Matt, your picture looks oh, good. Who's down there? She said. Yeah, it's the uh, lack of light from the window. Make a big difference. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I gotta do something about my lighting, but really, I need to move to a different room. I guess I could go like that, but. Um, there's a background setting. Um, we'll talk tomorrow. Uh, there's a way to uh, put artificial backgrounds, and you look all GQ and stuff. Yeah, I know, but you have to have a minimum i7 uh, processor, and I don't. I don't think so. Well, unless you have a Mac. I don't think so. Yeah, I do. I tried it a couple of times. So we'll see. Is Andy gonna come? Is Andy gonna come install network stuff? I'm getting a weird echo. Well, let's get him out here. Maybe we can take him to the ranch too, right? Make a day of it. Sounds good. Hey, Jeremy, yeah. you know what <laughs> oh, God, here it comes. Ah. All right, so I'm coming out of the kettle of the verb. What? Looks like you're in good hands. All right, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Bye, man. Well. Take care, Rudy. Nice seeing you. All right, I'm coming out of the catalytic converter. Where am I going next? Muffler. The uh, resident. Muffler is correct. Thank you. Oh, What's the muffler doing? Quieting the sound. Yep. That's it. And then it goes out the exhaust pipe. Okay. Good. Questions, comments on that? You can't see this page anymore, right? I no. see you. I just see you. Let me try this. Now I got Rudy. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So you remember the camshaft, right? There's a circle like this. And a cam is just a circle with a bump on it. Mm -hmm. That's a cam lobe. So what are we using the cam lobe to do? To open and close open the valves. The valves. Well, to control the valves, sure. I mean, it does yeah. open the, it opens the valves and controls the closing. Because you could have a circle like this. Oh, my hands are jacked with a little bitty bump or you can have a circle like this with a freaking huge bump what's the difference going to be how yes. long the valve open they'll stay open well that one's going to stay open you've got Heavy valve lift, lift and you've got valve station Now, lift is how oh, far? Uh -huh. Expiration. How long it's open? How long yeah, it stays long. open? Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we're talking about intakes, for instance. If we hold the valve open longer, we're going to get more air and fuel into the cylinder, right? Correct. Yeah. Is that going to increase our emissions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're burning more fuel, you're going to get more smoke, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So then why do people buy cams that hold the valve open further and longer? So they can get more air and fuel into the cylinder for more power. More, more, power. more combustion. That's exactly it. Yeah, it's more power. Good. Wonderful. Okay. Now, we could, if I was to put a cam like this in my engine, wouldn't I save fuel and get better emissions? Yes, yeah, but you lose a lot of power. Yeah, but you lose a lot of power. Exactly. Does that make sense? You increase your mileage. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. So all of these cam lobes are arranged on a stick like uh, shish kebabs. And it's kind of hard to draw, so I don't spend too much time trying to make it good. Well, I'll just do it that way. That's fine. Hey. What? That right there is called what? Camshaft. Camshaft is correct. Yep. Good. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can use the camshaft in a uh, engine. Well, wait. First of all, tell me how many camshafts an engine has. Depends. One to four. Depends. I didn't ask you what you're going to use when you ran out of toilet paper. Ah. Quack. That was Michelle's joke. I just thought I'd. <laughs> hey, Dave. There, everybody, man. Dave. Everyone that shows up shows up tonight should get a free roll of toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on by. Right now. <laughs> hey, go find that stolen truck that had a thousand rolls in it. And yeah. <laughs> you know, it caught fire. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, incidentally, we've got a new program called Electude that you're really, really going to like. You're going to like it a lot. In fact, I'll prove it to you. So, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to go here. Come on now. There. And then I'm going to say Electude Demo. See if that works. Oh, cool. All right, check this out. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What the hell? Mm. All right, dig that, Chuck. Are you ready? Ready. Do it, do it, do it. You getting excited yet, Chuck? <laughs> That's cool. That is freaking cool, man. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is freaking awesome. Hey, take out the spark plug. Now he just changed out the coil. And then you got to write out the uh, work order. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is a real this is a real expensive program. It's like nine thousand dollars. Wow. And they gave it to you? Yeah. Yeah, the biggest idiot in the freaking United States. <laughs> no, you're only second. <laughs> Hey, Chuck, you excited yet? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Like That's it. Freak. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's the fuel injector wavelength. That is awesome. I can't wait. So in order to learn this stuff, we're going to have to freaking get on it because we only got six weeks, but we won't do all of it, but we'll do some of it. Rudy, what do you think?
Oh, wow. It has, has a max value, a minimum value. Yep. Hey, Chuck, incidentally, I was thinking of uh, dropping my scan tool over at your house so you could play with it. You into it? What was that again? I'm sorry? I was thinking of dropping off my scan tool at your house just so you can play with it. Are you? Oh, it? yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You live around here? Uh, in Raj Cucamonga. Okay, we'll talk. All right. Supposed to be. <laughs> Live data. Look at that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow, look at that. Well, schematic. That is freaking cool, man. All right. Let's see. The hell? Oh, and then they have contests. I don't want that. Let me see something. Yeah, they got a hell of a tube. That's why they charge nine nine thousand dollars. <laughs> I already That's did this. Cool. I already did this. Let's move on. Okay, yeah, this is the part I wanted you to see. All right. Come on. All right, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Now I gotta find someone to pay for it next year. <laughs> but Chuck, what I can do what what I can do guys is I can give you unlimited access to the whole freaking suite for the next month and a half oh maybe longer right so you can work you can work through all this stuff at your own pace okay yeah now i now i don't have to draw anymore you know how i hate that <laughs> do it do it yeah <laughs> Rowcliffe's drawings are immaculate art pieces of art. Yeah, but I can't do animations like this. The animations are incredible, man. Oh, true, but your art is still beautiful. Aw. <laughs> yeah, you know. So what they do is they ask you all these questions, right? They give you this instruction, and then they ask you all these questions. And at the end, it gives you a score, and it gives me a score. So I don't even have to do any grading. That's cool. Yeah, wow. so the lazy teacher's key, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's going to help you understand it better, though? Yeah, I think so. Probably. I think so. Yeah. It's good. How about you, Jim? What about me? You think it's going to help you understand cars better? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what Jim's thinking right now is why do I need Rowcliffe if I have this? I guarantee you there's a lot of principals asking the same question. Oh, oh yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. For a lot more than this. Yeah, well you only have to buy this once. Yeah, but it doesn't care about its students the way you do. Oh <laughs> I can't eat cupcakes oh, like I do. Great. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> This is cool, man. Yeah, unfortunately, I've been kind of lazy in, in getting you guys access to this, but, but we will. Yeah. 
And that way you never have to leave home. You never have to leave home to work. Hooray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Well, the best part though is the paycheck's still rolling in. Yeah. For now, I just signed a contract for next year, so I'm pretty... That's good. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Because I got to tell you, you know, if, if we have programs like this, you don't really need a credentialed teacher, sad to say. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, when I was in high school, I hated high school so bad. When I was in high school, I would have just rushed, I would have just done all this stuff and I would have been done, you know, in like three weeks. And kick back for the rest of the semester. And kick back for the rest of the semester, yeah. <laughs> um, the question is, though, do you guys understand how University of Phoenix, do you know how University of Phoenix works? Mm -mm. Okay, University of Phoenix will give you a bachelor's or a master's in nursing online. Right. Do you know how they right. do it online? Mm -mm. Yeah, they do all the instruction online, but then you have to fly to Florida for like two weeks and you do all the clinicals at the same time. Okay. Hmm. I was wondering about that. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? Scary, isn't it though? Michelle, wouldn't you think huh? so? Isn't that kind of scary? No. No? No. That's... no. If you want to be a nurse and you... make 150 grand a year, you're going to have to leave your comfort level. Yeah, you're, it's you, everything you're doing when you're nursing is for the first time, like catheters, shots, all that stuff. You got to, someone's got to do it for the first time. Yeah. I mean, everybody does it like that, you know? Well, you, just dive practice, in. you can practice on Dave. Yeah. And we practice on each other. We're <laughs> <laughs> oh, really good. So. good <laughs> the good news I got? What? I have to have both my hips replaced. That's not good news. <laughs> Oh, it is for me. Well, not for a while, yes. you won't. Yeah. Yeah, really. Well, I'm hoping that uh, next week, maybe. Better. They canceled all surgeries right now. So, yeah, you know. unless, unless it's life saving. Uh, I might tell them it's life saving. Yeah. No, they'll just put you in a wheelchair. Yep. I'll take that too, but they don't want to give me one. I'm too young. <laughs> That's nice no. with you, Rudy. I'd stay away from the hospitals right now. Where are you? Yep. Yep. True that. I'd stay really far away from him. You do know I have the cure for this, right? Oh, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, you do. What's your cure? What is it? Oh, uh, hold on. Let me let me have my oh, son. No. He's gonna. God damn it! I knew this was coming. Should have asked. Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, Hoot Tino, what's going on? Hmm. Okay, I'll show y'all what it is as soon as he gets back here. <laughs> oh, the hell? Excuse me. God damn it, that's it. He's backing up. <clears throat> well, I'm glad you didn't ask us to pull your finger. Yeah. Yeah, huh? <laughs> didn't come out of that edge. Oh, <laughs> well, somewhere. If I can actually see. No, not that. Oh, wait, you're going to need me to check it back in. What is the hell? What are you showing us? Ever clear. 190 proof. What? Oh, gosh. 95% alcohol by volume. <laughs> gotcha. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed to clear up pretty much anything. Hey, Jimbo, what's your last name? Not. Oh, really? Okay. Not. Yeah. Okay. And Juventino, how you doing? Where's your good friend Daryl Brown? Where's uh, Andrew Heeks? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta give him oh, a yeah. bunch of crap. Where is he? Well, have you seen him over this yet? Half of oh. us on him. The preview of some of the electric drive learning content. Can you hear that? Barely. 
lesson is made of three parts the graphic area, the Wikipedia like short text area. It's electric car. Area. This is an introduction lesson to electric. Whoop, whoop. It is designed for the student to learn what is an electric drive. No, that's a hybrid. Basics of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. All right, you had enough yet? There we are. Oh. Never. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jim Not. Jim Not, you sitting in the dark? Yeah. Uh. My wife won't let me turn the lights on. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised how common that is. Doggone it. How's it? Is that better? Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, way better. <laughs> that was I get to see the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my There it is. Okay. What in the world? What's going on here? What's the meaning of this? <laughs> if that was sausage, I'd probably be into it. Yes, for Rudy. Speaking of which, where's Tony Tritty Mus? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Where is Tony Tritty Mus? I don't know. Hmm. There you are, Jim. So, yeah. I see you, man. There you go. Uh, now do it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, T Tomas, how many cams does the uh, engine have? Uh, one, two, about five, six? Depends, right? Could have one, could have four. Oh. Could have two. Uh, a friend of mine just took delivery on a bright red 2020 uh, C8 Corvette. Now, Rudy, are you, know you, the best are part you aware about of an engine? C8? Are you aware of an engine that has more than four cams? No, there's yeah, four so. and two. Right. right. Four, two, and one. one. Four, two, yep. and one. Your twin uh, cam has two cams. Like the Cobra has four cams. And the... Wait. I think there is one that has more than two cam, four cam. Let me make I think it's drawing. a W16 from Bugatti. Yeah, yeah I, I believe that. Okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, if we have one cam, it's going to be located inside the block. Oh, not necessarily, huh? Could be. Or, well, the crankshaft, the crankshaft would be located in the block. So is the cam. Or yeah, a single if, you had, if you had single overhead cam. Mm -hmm. There are no single overheads anymore. What? They're either twin overhead or they're uh, in, in the block. block. Yeah. I don't believe you. Really? The single, the the old Honda motors that were single cam had one cam over the head. Well, lots of engines had single overhead cam. Yeah, but not no more. They're all twin cam or uh, if they are single, they're single in the block. Yeah. I'll make this pretty drawing for you. And then I'm going to stick the head right here. Dude, it is so weird to watch you draw on this thing. Is it? <laughs> yeah, because your video is so laggy. All of a sudden, your head's at one spot, and you move it, and there's like, it goes to the other spot, and then the line appears. Well, if it's laggy, it's that's on you, not me. Is everyone else getting the same lag problem? No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You're on wireless, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. 
Let me I bought Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's what and I, I got full of signal. <laughs> because what we found with Zoom is if you're not using a wired connection, it tends to cause problems. Because you ah. get like three megabytes on Wi-Fi and you're getting like 103 megabytes when you're plugged into a network cable. So all my stuff's cabled. Yeah, all my stuff is wireless. Okay, single overhead cam. Do you like that drawing yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the reason it's called single overhead cam is because there's one camshaft and it's over the right. head. They do that because they wanted to get away from the lifter and the push rod. Do you have a drawing of the lifter and the push rod? Did we go over that? Yes. Yeah, we did. Okay, so so what's the problem with the lifter and the push rod? Oh, and the rocker. What's wrong More with that? moving parts. Yeah, yeah, they're very heavy. So what happens is they get inertia. Hey, what's inertia? Um, it's Momentum. like when you're already going a certain direction and it yep. wants to continue mm -hmm. in that direction. Excellent, excellent. Right? Yeah, it's the tendency of objects in motion to stay in motion. And it's the tendency of stuff that's not in motion to not to stay to not to stay not in motion. Yeah. Let me do this. I'm not in motion right now. Right. I'm never in motion. All right. Everyone's on spring break except me. <laughs> I guess. Spring break starts tomorrow. Not for me. I had mine last week. Well, All for right. the school. New page. For my son's school, they go on spring break tomorrow. Right. Yeah. How's he doing in school, incidentally? I guess he's doing pretty good. I mean, he's, he's on the computer break. every single morning. Good. Getting all his homework assignments done. There you go. First of the week, first of the week though, we had to do all of the first week he was out of school, which was the week I was gone. He didn't do any of his paperwork assignments. Mm. Did, you, did you send them down to the principal's office? Yeah, it's called my my hand to his <laughs> rear. Good for you. Yep. I made him sit down there and do every single sheet of homework. It took him a day to complete every single assignment. Good. Time well spent. Yep. One right there is called DOHC. What does DOHC stand for? Dual, Dual overhead cam. cam. Dual overhead cam. cam. Which is okay. what that. And this one's going to be the intake. Let's I don't see. think you can see. And what's this no, one going to be? It's too dark now. Exhaust. Yep, that's going to be exhaust. Good. Now, what's the advantage of dual overhead cam? Better control of the valves. Yep. That's true. Because what they found was, if you have a single overhead cam, it's really hard to control the valves. You got to have rockers because the valves are short, like this. So you need to have rockers. So that's, I mean, you're, you still got heavy valve train parts. So the reason they had a dual overhead cam is so that one cam is doing all the exhaust valves, one cam is doing all the intake valves so that the cam can be in exactly the perfect place for maximum combustion efficiency. Okay, so what is the disadvantage to dual overhead cam? Cost, manufacturing. Yeah, it's expensive. Yep, good. Now Chuck's all, I don't wanna to listen to this jackass anymore. Give me the electric password. <laughs> um, all right, so what makes the camshaft turn? The timing Next. belt. Timing belt or timing chain. There's three cam drive systems. There's gears. There's chains. And there's, and there's belts. belts. And there's belts, yes. Now, Rudy, you didn't bring it up, but it's true. Nobody makes an engine with a timing belt anymore. 
Did you know that? Yeah, I know. I haven't. I haven't replaced the one on my flex yet. It's got 216k. You got a timing belt or a timing chain? I don't know. Well, what exactly do you do all day, son? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not driving around all the time. So yeah. Okay. Traffic is clean. Well, I'm assuming if it's got 260,000 miles on it, it must be a chain because the belt would have broken by now. Yeah. Probably. You really, you really don't care if you destroy your engine? Wow. Nah. I destroy it. I throw the car away. Go get me my Tesla. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, Richie. Yeah, Rick. but Dave, Dave, if you have a serpentine belt, wouldn't you normally have a a chain? No. No. There's no there's no relationship between serpentine belts and anything else. Pretty much every oh, engine has serpentine belt. I'm not aware of any that doesn't put it that way. Um. Yeah, okay. but I, I'm I'm just saying Hondas. Yeah. Uh, if you use, if they have, if you have a serpentine belt, then you have a timing chain. No, 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 because my Integra really? has a timing belt and it's got a serpentine belt. Wow. Okay. What do we think, Chuck? Is there any relationship between to told serpentine me. belts and timing belts? No, because serpentine belt only controls the accessories and to yeah, that's right. that's the right. one belt is uh, better for efficiency, less, uh, Parasitic drag, we have a bunch of belts and pulleys. Right. Well, plus, the real reason they use a serpentine belt is so that they didn't have to have all of these layers of belts going to each accessory drive, right? They right. just have one. So it makes the engine shorter, so it means you can put it in a car that is narrower. That's the whole idea behind the serpentine belt. Okay. Can, can, I, can I say something here? Yeah, you just did. Okay. No. On... Uh, on, on, I'm just saying on the 2000 Honda, on 2018 Honda, right? Yeah. On the one, on the 1 1.8 engine, it runs off a uh, doesn't have a serpentine belt. What? You know they they, they they have they have two belts they have two belts on the outside and then on the inside uh, to drive the water pump they have a timing belt. On the two point oh, on the two point oh engine, which my wife's well, it's my wife's car, they they drive they drive all the accessories off of off of a, a serpentine belt, and there's a timing chain. But on the one point eight, the water pump is driven is driven off of a, uh, a timing belt, which is why which yeah. is why because it's an interference it's an interference engine, which is why you have to change. The, the the timing belt in the water pump every hundred thousand miles. No, yep. Jim. The reason why you change your water pump when you're changing your timing belt is they're designed to fail together. And so, <laughs> since you're already in the area, you might. Right. Well yeah, I, I agree. Well, yeah, I agree. I I agree with that. But I'm just but, I'm just saying on the 1.8 engine on the 2018 uh, Civic. The water, the water pump is not driven off the serpentine belt. It's, it's driven off of a, a timing belt uh, under 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 a cover. Right. It, I th that's all I'm saying. So. Okay. Well, I don't think there's any relationship between serpentine belts and timing belts. Uh, whether you have a timing belt or a timing chain is completely dependent on the manufacturer. But right. what happened was, you know, every, everything is determined by JD Powers now. You know what JD Powers is? Yeah, JD. Yeah. Yeah, JD Powers is the um, the ranking system that consumers use to uh, let everybody know how satisfied they are with a certain car or not. And what happened was they found that when you have a timing belt, it's so expensive to get it fixed that people that have a timing belt fixed they hate their freaking cars now. So what everyone did now is they found the timing chains because you don't have to replace them. Now, a timing belt is nice because it's quiet and it's cheap, yeah. but it'll break if you look. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, no. what are the two enemies of uh, rubber? Oil. Yeah. Yeah. Grease. And heat oil. Heat oil. Yeah. No. And that's why you have to have all these seals to keep that timing belt dry. Timing belt has to be dry. Does the timing chain have to be dry? No. No. 
timing chain have to be dry? No. No. No, in fact, well, it has I, to I be hope wet, not. right? I hope not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have problems if it is. Okay, so the disadvantages of timing belts is they break. And when they break, if you have a valve that's all the way down when the heat comes up, it's a freaking engine wrecker. Yep. I mean, some people will change the head, but you know, I wouldn't. That's why I change my timing belts on time, Rudy. Pay attention to stuff like that. Now, <laughs> timing chains. Timing chains are I noisier than motor belts. And tune up. It don't need no more. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> now, a timing chain is noisier than a timing belt. And the problem you're going to have with timing chains, oh, plus the timing chain is really expensive. Plus, the problem you're going to have with timing chains is that they stretch. Right. Now, what does the timing chain do? What does the timing belt do? What do all these it, things do? It, it, it takes more time. time. The crankshaft with the, with the, the time yeah. both is upper and lower cams. Yeah, they synchronize the camshaft with the crankshaft. Timing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem: if your belt stretches, are you still going to have the same timing? Nope. No, the camshaft is actually going to be retarded. It's going to run slow, and that's going to is it, okay. So what effect is that going to have? Low vacuum right. idle. Yep. yep. All kinds of power issues, right? Yep. Right. Now the um, timing chain is also going to have guides, right? Yes. What are the guides there for? To keep, keep the tension. Stretching. The keep the tension. No. Nope. To keep it, to keep keep it, it in the right stretching. relationship. Keep it from whipping. Yeah, it's to keep it from whipping, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because when the timing chain gets loose, if it gets loose, it can destroy it's, I mean, it's just it's the same as a freaking chainsaw, right? Pretty much. Sure. Yeah. yeah. OK. What keeps the belt and the chain tight? Tensioners. Tensioners, absolutely. Now, while we're on that topic, Rudy, remember if you're changing out a timing belt on most cars, you're supposed to change the water pump and the tensioner, right? Yep. Right. Yep. Right. For the same reason, Rudy identified. Um, they're all supposed to fail at the same time, basically. And you don't want to lose a tensioner. Losing a tensioner is really bad. Losing a tensioner is how you strip the teeth off a timing belt. And if you strip the teeth off, it might as well be broken. Yeah. Might skip a tooth. Whatever it is, it's bad. All right. Good. So, what does what does the tensioner do? Keeps the tension right. Keep tension yep. on the belt or chain. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so that's intake, that's exhaust, and that right there is the crank, crank shaft pulley. Oh. Okay, what's this thing right here? Tensioner. That's a tensioner. Yeah, that's a tensioner. Good. Good. Any questions, comments, thoughts on that? Yeah, how about camp phasers? Okay, that's where I was going next. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's perfect. We have this thing called VVT, and pretty much everybody's using it now. Variable valve timing. Stands for variable valve timing. timing. Now, you remember when we talked about those camshafts, the cam lobes, we said mm -hmm. that if you want really high power, you got to have this big old cam lobe. And if you want good fuel economy and you want the thing to run nice at, uh, you know, idle smoothly, you got to have a small camshaft. So the problem is you can't have both. So what the manufacturers have done now, this is the whole thing behind VTEC, right? VTEC at 3,500, this solenoid opens up, and as a result, you get all this oil flow, and it makes the camshaft way bigger because it's got multiple lobes. 
But the important thing is, the important thing is that most manufacturers are doing this instead now. They found that it works better because what they can do now, it just doesn't all come on at once. It varies throughout the RPM range. Speaking of which, what's RPM? Revolutions per, per minute. minute. Revolutions per minute, which is a measurement of crankshaft speed? Rotation. Crankshaft rotation, good, okay. So what are we doing with variable valve timing? Well, we're gonna have a mechanism on the camshaft pulley. Illuminati confirmed. We're gonna have <laughs> a mechanism on the camshaft pulley. So it's going to vary the relationship right, vary the relationship between the crank and the cam. And back in the old days, they might want to just have this on the intake, but most modern engines are going to have this on the intake and the uh, exhaust cams. What's the problem? I mean, it can go bad. Yeah, this is definitely going to make the engine run better. It's going to give you more power. It's going to give you a smoother idle, and it's going to give you better fuel economy and lower emissions. But what's the problem? Expensive. That thing goes yeah. out. It's another system, right? It's another system, and you know, systems fail. Look at the Fords. Yeah. That now, Triton motor. Do me a favor, folks. If you have a modern engine, what do you need to do regularly? Oil changes. Your oil change your freaking oil. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> The number one cause of failure for all of the variable valve timing mechanisms is lack of lubrication. Change your yeah. oil. Lack of lubrication. No, what happens is people leave the oil in there too long and it leaves deposits in the tiny um, orifices that make this work correctly. So if you took it apart and cleaned it, actually it would work, but nobody would do that. Now, here's my question. It might end up like my like my emergency brake handle. Oh, what's going on with that? Comes apart and never gets put back together. Huh. Should have Roman fix it. <laughs> All right. My question to you is. If the variable valve timing is not working correctly, or to verify that it is working correctly, how do we do that? The VBT will give an error code. Yeah, but, but what makes it get the error code? In the back of the can, there's usually a notch that tells you what position it's at. What do you call that sensor? The, uh, uh, valve pos position sensor? The what? Valve position sensor? I don't know. Nope. It's called the cam position, position sensor. Oh, okay. That was kind of right. Yeah, you're close. <laughs> I was pretty amazed by that. Cam position sensor. Now, there's also a crank position sensor, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what do you notice? They're There's both supposed to be the same. Yeah. They're in different locations. So one's up, one's down. The crank position sensor is CPK. K stands for crank, I guess. That's yeah. Fun. So we're constantly comparing the cam position sensor signal and the crank position to the crank position mm -hmm. sensor signal. We're constantly comparing them to make sure that the cam is in the right place. If it's not, you're going to get an error code. And good luck with that freaking error code. And I'll guarantee you, can I guarantee you? I will guarantee you 90% of the, 95% of the time, if you've got a variable valve timing code, it's because the jackass didn't change the oil. 
That's like 95% of all the VTech problems. You can actually go in there and clean out the little screen and get it to work, but it's usually hard to get to. All right. Questions, comments, thoughts on that? Marble Mr. Oil. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you go to YouTube, you're going to see a lot of videos of people like, I put seafoam in my engine and look, it runs good now. But, you know, okay. And they prove it. So, I mean, I, maybe, maybe, maybe they're run, maybe they're running the video backwards. I don't know, but uh, there's a lot of people that have good luck with it. Do you have good luck with Marvel Mystery all? All the time. What is that? I add it to every oil change. What is it? No way, really? Yeah. Keeps the seals nice and swelled up. It uh, keeps the rings opened up. Works for me. It, what's it called? What's it called? Marvel Mystery Oil. It's called Marvel. Dave, remember we used that on George's truck. Who? Jiffy Lou. Yeah. And you have an old motor, you pour that down the spark plug. Well, why didn't you tell me this? I got the freaking Forerunner. Hey, Chuck, you want to buy the Forerunner cheap? <laughs> You can fix it. I got I it. Pick up. You can fix it. I know you can. I'll drop it off. <laughs> <laughs> you got any space in your driveway, dude? Hmm? You got any space in your driveway? Yes. I always make space. Okay. So it might be smart because there's no way it's going to get fixed in the next four months if I don't bring it to you. <laughs> Probably. Uh, are you busy now? No. Okay. All right. Well, I just got paid, so of course I'm I'm ready to spread money all over town. Why don't you just yank the motor out? Oh, why don't you just yank the motor out? <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you have a good Do you have a good source for motors? I got a good rebuilder. Uh, in LA and Southgate, TC something or other, they have the used Japanese motor. There's a used Japanese motor off of. Uh, Right by the 60 and I got a uh, good Haven. Motor. There's a place that sells used Japanese motors. Yeah. Right from Japan. Now, why would I you got use, a good rebuilder? Uh, that's what they all say. How do you know? I've used them for two other customers' cars, and the motors came out perfect. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of like yeah. Brothers Auto. They're pretty good. Oh, God damn it. Brothers Auto screwed me bad at one point. <laughs> I had a motor down for them. It came out good. Did it? Yeah. Okay. So you gotta... Well, how much would a new motor for that 400 be? Like 300 bucks? Or... A used one from Japan? Probably. Really? Give me a cord. I need something to charge me. Lift up Can the you... head of my bed. There's a cord down there. You install it for $100? That's perfect. <laughs> Start tomorrow. Is that a hard R&R &R because it's four-wheel drive? No. Motor comes out the same way. So you would Two pull the motor and leave the trans in it? Yep. How would you get the torque converter out? Oh, okay. Once the motor's out. Okay. So whose house am I bringing it to, delivering it to tomorrow? <laughs> Sounds like Rudy's got this one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm Bring it over it. here. I'll take care of it. Or better off, I'll just come pick it up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And it got there. I mean, it runs okay. It's five cylinders. It runs okay. It doesn't overheat, which I don't Apple. understand. Hey, kids, while we're, while we're having this conversation, let's talk about that. Um, what do we need to have effective combustion? You know, I've got five cylinders that work. How do I know? Because I pull off the spark plug wires one at a time. Now, if I pull off the spark plug wires one at a time, every time I pull off a spark plug wire, what should happen to the engine speed? It should drop. Well done. It should yeah. drop. Now, of course, if it's got an idle speed control motor, it's going to bring the idle back up. But you should see a noticeable drop in RPM for at least a moment mm -hmm. when you disconnect the spark plug wires going to each cylinder, because now you're not going to have ignition, right? 
<laughs> yep. Okay. So when I disconnect the spark plug wire going to number five cylinder, there's no change. What does that tell me? That cylinder's not firing. Well, it tells us the cylinder's not contributing, right? Yep. Okay, so how are you going to determine whether it's a fuel problem or a compression problem or a spark problem? Well, it's not an air issue. Yeah. Yeah. No. We're talking pre, because... pre OBD2, right? Yeah, 94. Hold on. That means, uh, well, you look for a spark. If it's got a spark, you uh, got to go to compression, compression tester. Yeah. Now, Chuck's brought up an important point. Since this is an OBD1 car, and I do not suggest that you guys get an OBD1, incidentally, did I already mention that don't get a freaking CVT, con continuously variable transmission? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, those are terrible. Yeah, I just got called by a student in this class. He's got a 2004 Nissan Murano with a CVT, and he doesn't know where to take it to get it rebuilt. I told him nobody knows how to rebuild those and make them. I money. have a guy. Really? Yes. Okay, it was Willie, so I'll have him get a hold of you then. Yeah. Tell him to call me, and I'll get a hold of my transmission guy and figure out what it'll cost him to have it done. I guess there's lots of transmission guys now transmitting uh, coronavirus. That was a coronavirus <laughs> joke. Was Funny. Too soon? Too soon? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Chuck brings up the question, is this an OBD1 car? Yeah, that's the problem. Because do we have misfire detection on OBD1 cars? Yes, but it's not very good. Mm -mm. There's no misfire detection on an OBD1 car, depending on the car, but it's not required. Your Honda's have one. What? Hondas have a misfire detection on them. On OBD1? Uh-huh. My 96 Prelude had it. I mean, my 89 Prelude had it. Do not believe you. Yep. My my 89 Prelude had told me I was misfiring on cylinder one. Hmm, that's interesting. Is that real close? What? And my plug was burnt. Have you tried disconnecting the fuel injector also to that one cylinder? No, because the stupid fuel injector is underneath the big old plenum. So that's what and I would get do. But the real pain in the. Yeah. Yeah, to change the fuel injector, you got to pull off like half of the top end of the engine. But here's the thing. I don't think we have a fuel delivery issue. You know, I don't think I have a fuel delivery issue. What happens when you smell the exhaust? It smells it's like, like gas. It smells like gas, mm -hmm. which tells us what? That you're getting Leaking. gas in the Injector works, it's just not getting burnt, right? Are you guys following in this conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Marvel Mr. L does great for injectors, too. What? Yeah, the fuel one is awesome. <laughs> but it's not well, the, the gas oil, tank. Right? Yeah, no, but you can make some of the fuel, too. Oil, have one for fuel. Are you talking about... The man the does ever clean your car out. Are you talking about putting straight, regular Marvel Mystery Oil in the gas tank? Yeah, no, not not the whole bottle, just a few ounces. ounces. In the How gas much? tank? A few ounces with a full tank of gas. So like a quarter of a bottle or something? No, about two ounces maybe. It depends on the ratio of fuel. It tells you the mixture on the bottle. Oh, okay. Huh. Hey, you know they've brought a fuel system one out of did it and direct, do it now. Marvel, Marvel Mystery Oil has brought a fuel system cleaner out directly. Oh, wow. Cool. So you don't have to count it. It's just already there, and you just pour the bottle in your tank when you fill. All right. Let me ask you some questions because this is kind of important. If we have fuel coming out of the exhaust, and there's only one cylinder that's not making a contribution, we have to assume the injector is working, right? Yeah. 
It may be working, but not seeding. So you're saying that there's excessive fuel caused by a leaking fuel injector? Yeah, if you smell it out the tailpipe. Okay, but let me ask you a question. When I take the spark plug out, if I have a leaky injector, be wet. Isn't the spark plug gonna smell like gasoline? Sure. Will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, if that, mm, yeah. I was just gonna say, won't it give you black smoke? Why won't it give you black smoke? That's a good question. Why won't excessive fuel in that burnt up in the cat? What? It's being burnt up in the catalytic. No, no, it won't give you black smoke because it's not getting ignited. Let me ask you this. The only other way is to do a compression test or a leak down test. Yep. Yep. I have a leak down tester at school. <laughs> um, yeah, for some reason we don't have a compression tester at school. That's one of the things I need to order for next year. Um, geez, and we just got all those lifts installed. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you try pouring oil down the, the cylinder, see if the compression no. comes up? Uh, we haven't even done the compression test yet because we don't have a compression tester. At school. I think I have one in, uh, at home. My damn adult school students weren't so goddamn lazy they could have changed the compression a long time ago. <laughs> Oh, I did. I think we did find a computer tester. So, hopefully, we're at the tail end of this stupid coronavirus thing. And we can get back to work. No, uh, the thing about the OBD one is that you have to do old school detector work. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually the cool thing about being old, because old guys are the only people that know how to do that anymore. Hard to find yep. hard to find young people that want to think that hard. But, I mean, you look at the industry, it's just the pay keeps going up and up and up because I mean you gotta be pretty hardcore. Are you guys on uh, Chuck, are you on Diagnostic Network? No, no sir. You should be. I think it's free. You should oh, wow. be. Hardcore stuff. Yeah, it's Scott Brown from Claremont. Diagnostic Network. Yeah, yeah, I, I went to his website. I did sign up for him. Diag.net. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's, doing, he's doing great things, man. I saw a video of his where he troubleshoot that uh, t uh, chaff wire and uh, messed yeah, up the, the whole computer in, in that suburban. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good he's video. A, he's got a lot more videos like that. You should check them out. Huh? What's this? Chat. God damn it! That's it. <laughs> Everyone got their chat going? Mm -hmm. the hell? <coughs> you wait all this time to say something and that's what you end up saying? God damn it, that's it. Uh, that's pretty good though. Hadn't heard that one. Yeah, so... I need to get rid of the F-250, I need to get rid of the silver Corvette, and I need to get rid of the 4Runner. Then I'll be happy with life. How much you want for the forerunner? I may have to buy it. As is? Yes. You tell me. I don't know. You tell me. It's got <laughs> brand new tags to 21. No. Huh? It's got brand new tags till March 21. Okay, but how much do you want? You tell no, me. How no, much? No, 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 two? No. You want two? Okay. Let me make a, let me tag someone right now. I mean, is what that year? 94. I just want to get rid of it mostly. It's costing me, you know, 30 bucks a month every month, plus registration, plus everything. So, anyways, if you guys want one, any of those, you let me know because I got way too many vehicles. Fortunately, right now in Laverne, they don't uh, they don't charge you to park in the street because of coronavirus. But yeah, <laughs> so I got a bunch of vehicles in the street right now. I'm giving the uh, F-250 to Father Joe's though. Unless you got money. Money is good. Hi, Hoom Dino, how are you? 
Still can't see you though. Hey, uh, Juventino, how come we can't see you? No camera. Oh, okay. Okay, well, well I'm glad you're here. That's for sure. Did you guys sign in? I did, I think. I don't know how. I don't know how either. Go into the three little buttons and go to the chat and you'll be able to sign in. Oh, right. and anyway. Just by typing your name. I don't know, or that was H. Let me see. Okay. There's three little buttons in like a bubble. Yeah, but give me chats, but I, I can go to chat. Okay, wait. Yeah, go to chat. And then go to chats. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'm at chats, and then how do I sign in, though? Just type your name. Your chat can be sent by everyone. Right Just at write the bottom. in the little box, and then hit send at yeah, the bottom. Right at the bottom. And Try then... what? Oh, say, oh, send to everyone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I do what? Just type whatever you want, and then hit the enter. Okay. Or send. Just type, in, just type your name. <sighs> Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Let me yep. see if it goes. I, can you check then? If I did it? Yeah, hold on. Now, can you guys send a chat okay. to yeah. each other? Yeah, I did. Okay, so, yay! <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm getting it. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. That's what we're focusing on tonight, you know? Really. There we go. So what else do we need to cover when it comes to cams? Char Charles just signed in. Wonderful. There we go. So we've got adjustment. for clearance. What's clearance? Um, it's having enough space. Space. To, space. Yeah. space between parts, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, tell me exactly how much clearance we need to have. Enough, but not too much. <laughs> That's it, buddy. Good. <laughs> Enough for the oil to pass through? Yep. Well, for anything. Clearance is primarily necessary. Oh, the hell? stand up time to compensate for the expansion, expansion of contraction. Good expansion of parts due to what expansion. What causes that expansion? Heat. Good. Heat. Wonderful. Wonderful. Heat makes everything longer and thicker? Bigger around. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Okay, so we need clearance. Because if we don't have clearance, what's going to happen is the valve's not going to close all the way. And if the valve doesn't close all the way, hmm. Think about that for a minute. Lost a compression. Sure, good for you. Good, good, mm -hmm. good. Oh. But never that's get old. What say what? I said never get old. Everybody does. Yeah, talk. Yeah, talk to me in the morning. 
<laughs> hey, Rudy, the did I mention that I'm, uh, did I mention that I'm 10 pounds heavier than I was when I graduated high school now? Awesome. Yeah, yes. two inches wider. Yeah, can't beat it. It's I'm, awesome. I'm still, I'm still 100 pounds heavier than I was when I graduated high school. <laughs> Do it, do it, man, do it. All you'll do is regret every minute you didn't do it. So might as well right. do it. All right, no, so well, loss of compression, it. that's a big problem. Plus, if you have an explosion, it'll go back in the exhaust, in the intake manifold where there's all that raw fuel. Could yeah, be an even bigger problem. Yeah. That's how you blow the intake manifold off. But one of the major problems you're gonna have is, how does the like? First of all, is the valve hot? Yeah, it's hot. Uh, Very. Exhaust one. Well, they're exhaust both hot. hot. They're both hot, but the exhaust valve is probably orange hot. Why is the exhaust valve so hot? From because the, from the gas. With that exact, from the exhaust that gas. Yeah, it's got all the smoke going past it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what cools down the intake? The co cold, cold air. Cold air, come here cold air but primarily the cold fuel right because when the fuel comes out of the fuel injector it's pointed right at the back of the intake valve so it's going to keep the intake valve cool which is why just you don't know this but let me see if you can figure it out the, the valve has to have clearance right the valve mm -hmm. inside the valve guide mm -hmm. What's true about the clearance on the exhaust valves versus the clearance on the intake valves? The exhaust the valves would be, would be less. What? The exhaust valves would be less because they get hot and they're going to expand. You need okay. more clearance. Yeah, you yeah. need more clearance. So the exhaust valves are going to have more clearance. Now, while we're on that topic, when you are setting this thing called valve lash which is the clearance between well let me draw it that thing right there is called the what rocker arm yeah good that is the rocker arm now this right here This little apertura right there is how we'd say it in Spanish. Is called the, the valve. Valve clearance. Usually it's called the valve lash. Hmm. Now, what's the point of the valve lash? Tell me again. It's got to be there. Well, for expansion. <clears throat> yep. Got to compensate for that expansion. Arnold Vasquez. He made it. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> Hooray. All right, Rudy. Arnold, how you doing, bud? Oh, unmute all. There you go. All right, Arnold. <laughs> well, he's here. Speak up, Arnold. Speak up. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, we're all glad to see you. That's for sure. Okay. So, here's the problem. The valves get hot, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the valves get hot. How do they get rid of the heat? That's where the water jackets cool. come in play. Cool. Well, cool. when it comes to the valve... Yeah, you're right about the water jackets. Because that's the water jacket right there. I guess it should be coolant, right? But the valve's coming like this. The hot valve is going to transfer all of its heat into the valve seat. Which means if this valve isn't making good contact with that seat, it's going to burn. That's how you get burnt valves. Believe it? You ever had a burnt valve? No. 
If you have a burnt valve, it's always going to be what kind of valve? Intake or exhaust? Exhaust. Exhaust. Always going to be an exhaust valve. Yeah. Okay. So when the valve gets burnt, Oh yeah, I see that. Okay. It's going to get a crack like this. And what do you think that crack does to your compression? It messes it up. Yeah, yeah, it's done. <clears throat> Which is why my good friend Chuck is going to do a compression test on the Forerunner because that's a good possibility. You know, that engine's got 250,000 miles on it. More of a mystery oil. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if it worked. Oh, sorry about that. There's the rest of that drawing. All the heat in the valves has to be transferred to the seat and to the water jacket. So this drawing goes like this. This drawing goes like that. And this drawing goes like this. There we go. That makes sense. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What's this nut on top of the rocker do? Valve lash. Yep, that is the adjusting nut. Oh, okay. Now, me and Rudy have had some significant experience on Hondas with them needing a valve adjustment. How do you do valve adjustment? You have to have a feeler gauge or something. Yeah, that's the that's the, the static way of doing it. And the engine should be cold, right? Well, that's that's the point I'm trying to make. You know how you do valve adjustment? Exactly the way the factory says to do it. So that's not something you want to mess with, because if you end up with a valve that do, that doesn't close, you're going to destroy an engine. If you have a valve that's open when the piston comes up you're going to destroy an engine. So this is valve adjustment to me is scary as hell. That's why um, to me to have it in the beginning class seems very weird to me and, and, and inappropriate. I mean, I'm, I'm always scared when I'm adjusting valves because I know how easy it is to jack stuff up. So you're just going to follow the factory instructions to the letter. So it's different on different cars then. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I'm back. Good. Well, we were just talking about you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Arnold Vasquez, you here yet? Well, he's here. Good. I'm glad. Very, very glad. Good to have you, man. Welcome back. So what we're going to do is we're going to <clears throat> recognize that if you have certain lifters, you can adjust the valves while the engine's running. And there's a lot of advantages to doing it that way. Um, it's a lot quicker, put it that way. Because if, if your engine is cold and you're doing it with feeler gauges, that means you got to keep turning the engine by hand. It's, mm. it's a long process. I mean, especially, I mean, look at, look at, uh, look at my Toyota V6, right? It's got that big old plenum right on top of the valve covers. You're going to have a very, very hard time adjusting the valves on that. Let me see if this works. All right. So, guys, is this working out as a form of uh, teaching and learning? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. I think it's working. It's. I think it's working good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and you guys. Okay, so Michelle, you know, Michelle's been coming to office hours for the last four days and see how you start getting good at it you start getting to the point where you're like oh i can help you with that which is cool because yeah. freaking monday nobody knew anything right there we go real cliff victim. another victim has arrived <laughs> that would be me Same there thing? i am that's my tablet hmm okay <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Did you see your name change? 
Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. So, yeah, this is a lot better besides my cell phone's dying. Yeah, you're, you're in the dark, though. Dark still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got to replace the other porch light. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Take okay. it out, go get me another uh, LED like it and put it in. Yep. Be a lot better come tomorrow. Yeah, the place to buy those bulbs, incidentally, is Goodwill, but all the Goodwills are closed. Yeah, yeah I just go buy them at Home Depot, brand new. <clears throat> Speaking of which, does anybody know someone who wears size 44 waist pants? Because I got like 20 pairs I don't need. And now I don't think I'm down to a 44. I don't think you're down to a 40. I don't think you're down to a 44 either, buddy. You're probably down for a 40, though. No, I don't drink ah. beer. <laughs> this is what you need, buddy, right there. G2. Nope. Secret to my success. <laughs> None at all. God damn it. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this right. is a lot easier. Okay. Oh, yeah, all of y'all's pictures are way bigger on this tablet. Yeah. It's way better to use this tablet than my cell phone. Yeah, yeah the phone's not so great. I know. So did you guys watch the video that I assigned you last week? Was it last week? Week before. Um, the, which one? The one about the um, suspension? The one the about the one? electronic engine controls. Yeah, I did. You see him? Yeah. You know how freaking huge I used to be. That's funny. Yeah, you've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, it's tripping on that. Yeah, you look good. You look good. I'm still yeah. just as fat. <laughs> just like this. Okay, so we've got the crank. What does the camshaft position sensor do? Sensors it tells you where position. the camshaft is this. located. Yeah. Okay, so what does the <laughs> what does the crankshaft position sensor do? Tell you Sensors. where the crankshaft is. <laughs> yep, good. Okay, so they all report to something. What's that something? Powertrain control it's module. Control the module. ECU. Yep, the PCM. PCM. Yeah. Power Power control, control, control module. module. That's right. Rain. Yeah. Now, what else reports to the powertrain control module? The oxygen sensor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Rudy? Uh, Rudy? Rudy? Mass airflow sensor, yeah. Oh, Jesus, well, God, listen to you. No, Jesus reports to it? Okay. <laughs> Mass airflow. Good. Wonderful. What's a TPS? Oh, man. Oh. Throttle oh, position sensor. sensor. Yeah, yeah. Throttle yeah. position oh, sensor. sensor. Mass airflow. Pretty soon you're going to be able to make this uh, little diagram yourself, right? <laughs> Okay, don't forget this. The ECT, what's that? Um, engine cooling and temperature. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're trying engine, engine coolant control. Oh. Temperature. Temperature. What hmm. else? Um also the um drivetrain. Good. The anti brake system, right? Isn't there something for that? A sensor? Uh, no. no, no that not not as PTM input. What's the VSS? Vehicle, vehicle, speed, vehicle speed sensor. Vehicle speed hmm. sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, vehicle speed sensor is going to report what? The speed of the vehicle. There you go. Okay. So we've got all these inputs coming into the PCM. I think there's more, but I can't remember any. So what is uh, SRS? The what? Supplement. Uh, safety yeah. restraint system. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I don't want to get too far afield because okay. you know technically, since everything's on the network, even the radio is going to report to the PCM. Okay. But okay. I just want okay. to give a, a, a basic outline. Okay, so what is the PCM controlling? It's two <coughs> things. Maybe four. Right. What's the PCM controlling? Well, it's going to control the fuel system. That's right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you notice the arrow is going the opposite direction now? It's also going to control mm -hmm. what? Spark? Mm hmm. Is it ignition? Good. Ignition system. Good. It's also going to control. Yes. And and the What's the IAC? IAC. Um, oh, ignition. Yeah. No, idle speed sensor. Yeah. Idle air. No. Idle. idle air control. Oh, that's right. Okay. Idle air control. What does the idle air control motor do? Because remember. It opens and closes, allowing air to bypass the throttle blade. Yeah. So it will idle. I didn't know that. Yeah, it helps to go over it a couple of times, you know? Yeah, so, I have been. Oh, especially when you've been out and not dealing with it for a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I got to tell you, you know, this, this was a great blow to everybody's spirit. And, you know, until today, when I figured out how to do all this stuff, it was a great blow to my spirit too. And now I realize how sad I was, you know, how, uh, how, uh, how resigned I had been that this was never going to happen again. But I mean, this is almost, to me, this is almost as effective as being in a classroom. Pretty close. Except yeah. I have to sit down yeah. instead of stand. You except save gas. The working on the yeah. car part. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm convinced that this coronavirus thing is going to peak, and then when it peaks, we'll be able to go and work on cars. Plus, the principal so. said six the months. Pr the principal said he is not against having makeup days, like for this class. You know, because every every shop class is having big problems with this. The freaking yeah, architectural yeah. drafting class is having big problems. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. You know, so he's a great guy. He's probably. Well, he's one of my favorite principals in the district. Okay, so idle air control. Uh, what is the idle speed? The speed of the, the engine's turning when your foot's not on the gas. Wonderful, wonderful, good. Okay, so the idle air control. Okay, wait, 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 wait. How does the PCM know how fast the engine is turning? Because the, the, the speed sensor. The crank and camshaft position sensor. Crank position sensor, yeah. Oh. Okay. Tell it RPM, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the other thing we got to control. We have to control the spark advance. That's over oh, here. The evap okay. Evaporative emissions. emissions. Yep. <coughs> what does it mean to evaporate? Um, dissipate. Turn it. This turns into vapor. The aerosol. Yeah, water turns into a vapor. How do what makes water turn into a vapor? Heat. 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 Yep. So we're trapping all those vapors because what they found out was in the beginning of smog control, they found out that no matter what they did to the exhaust pipe, most of the emissions were coming out of the gas cap. Because hmm. you know you had to, you had to vent the gas cap to to let the vapors out or just pressurize the gas i mean it would basically blow up the gas tank so they found out that yeah there you go good tomas so what they did was they found out that they had to trap all these uh, vapors because after all if you park on you know you know how hot a blacktop is if you go and park on a hot blacktop the fuel inside your gas tank could be you know 120 degrees mm -hmm. and it's evaporating like crazy because gasoline is volatile Okay, what else? Well, PCM is going to come out here and it's going to, if it doesn't already, it's going to go to the TCM, which is what? Throttle control. Um, nope. nope. Throttle, throttle control module. Nope. Throttle transmission. Yeah, transmission control module, right? Oh, okay. Because all of these inputs are going to be used to determine shift points and pressures and stuff like that. And then over here, it's a modern car, right? Mm -hmm. Over here, we're going to the network bus. This is a great drawing. I really, really like it. I think it makes things much uh, simpler to understand. 
What's a network bus? It's a place where it's like how you do diagnostics and get information and share information. Yeah. yeah. And and we began to saw we began to see this in the shop because what we would do is we would go to the manufacturer specific scan tool and then we would you know hit play and then it runs through every computer on the network so it would give you the abs computer it would give you the transmission it would give you the hvac airbag yeah airbags it would give you freaking all kinds of stuff like and uh yeah so it's called network roll call right so it calls out every computer on the network for instance, I don't know why the red Corvette doesn't show uh, the um, the <coughs> magnetic leveling on the shock absorbers. It doesn't show on the network. We Probably found out that they removed the computer. Put the freaking fuse back in it, right? Because that's what we found on the Z06. The reason that the you know the little exhaust door, the reason that wasn't working is because uh, someone took the fuse out. Because when you take the fuse out on those, it stays open all the time. Yeah, it makes it loud as hell. Uh, except on the early ones, and mine, it's not loud as hell. It's louder, but it's not loud as hell. I mean, on the on the new ones, it's loud as hell. Really, I mean, it's like having a ricer, you know. Hey, Rokef, have you gotten in that Z08 yet? What? Did you get to sit in that Z08? Yo, no. There's a Z08. What the hell is that? <laughs> the C8. I mean. Oh, the C8. No. No, because um, uh, Mountain View Chevrolet was given 35 to sell and they already sold 34. They had one come on the lot and it was gone in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Black. They, they don't last. Right. So and the best part is they're selling like 10 to 15 over MSRP. Right. Well, they should. Everybody wants one. Yeah. But I, I would never buy a car like that that's like all brand new. Uh, those are pretty clean because you can swap the cam on that one without pulling the engine. Yeah, but Rudy, think think of it. Why do you never see any '97 Corvettes? You never because, see them because it's like they had all these problems, and you know they basically went to the junkyard. Okay, yep. so network bus. Everything's networked now, right? So mm -hmm. I'm on diagnostic network and they're like, well, we changed the radio and now the car won't start. <laughs> Tons of that. Really hardcore stuff. So I'm glad I don't have to try to make money that way. But someone cool. could. Someone could. I'll tell you one thing. You can't be a freaking dummy and work on cars at least. Yeah, I noticed that. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But what you need to do, Michelle, because after all, we got a consumer level interest in this class. What you got to do is you got to understand this stuff. So when someone starts talking a bunch of crap, you know, trying to charge yeah. you 1800 bucks to change a valve cover. Gas yeah. Right, right. Hey, Chuck. Yes. You missed out. Someone tried to charge Michelle 1800 bucks to change a valve cover gasket and a rack and pinion. Oh. 1800 yeah. bucks. I would have yeah. done it for 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I done it for sixteen nine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, he is up in Wrightwood, but still, I was like, okay, tell you what, give me a itemized list of what he does and the parts he changes, and then it was all like, blah 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 blah. Uh, no. <laughs> Price went down by what six hundred bucks? No, uh, yeah, it's a lot less. Yeah, hey, the rack on that is easy. Is it on a, her truck? Really? Yeah. You're in rack? Rack opinion? Yeah. How much, yeah how much That's the part to get to. How much you get in racks for? I haven't gotten the rack. I replaced one on, on a Tundra not too long ago. Uh, it was four bolts and knock out the tie rod ends and it comes right out. Yeah. Really? Well, neat. Michelle, now you know. You can just drive it down. Did you get the rack opinion replaced? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Well, may it run forever. Right? I'm not saying it's a bad deal. I mean, you got it done. So oh, oh. you yeah. can't say nothing about it now. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> she, was, she was driving up to Wrightwood and it was smoking pretty bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. After I turned it off, it was. Is that better? Was that the valve curve that was leaking or the oil sending unit? 
It was the it was both. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they changed that too. Yeah, the oil sanding unit and the valve cover they replaced, and then the rack and pinion. So what are we doing with the six hundred dollars I saved you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Going to have a party at your house, Dave. Cupcakes. <laughs> uh, cupcakes. Yeah, I'll pay for some cupcakes for a while, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah, good. good. All right. So. <clears throat> Is everybody oh, oh. see me better now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. This thing goes over here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. This thing goes over here to this thing. Make sure you get the shape right. I didn't, but make sure you get the shape right. God damn it. What's that? You can join me. Oh, it's the OBD2 port. Yep. Join us. Okay. We're going over right now. I just finished my homework. Got it. Yep, that's the OBD2 port. What's it used for? The, the diagnostic OBD2. What's going on with the car? Yeah, that's yes, what you plug the scan tool in. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, Chuck, when you're using the scan tool, just go on every freaking car you can, and you'll see that different manufacturers give us different systems and different years and different engines will give us different systems it's yeah. cool i mean you you can't hurt anything with a scan tool All right and what you're going to find is you're going to find that a lot of modern cars i think rudy rudy you can do a power balance test with a scan tool right on well, money i can yeah which is freaking awesome That's i could cool. i think i can even do it on the truck hmm yeah, maybe. Because Chrysler does weird stuff. I don't like it, but Chrysler does weird stuff. They came out with a, uh, uh, on Chrysler, you just can't run your OBT2s on the new ones. What? You have to have special jumper cables to bypass a, a module they have behind the radio just so you can program it. Well, my, my, oh, my, yeah, yeah. my and the radio module has been removed. My factory radio is gone. Illegal. Yeah, this programming stuff's pretty hardcore. That's why I spent all that money taking that class, because it's pretty hardcore. And if you go to Diag Diagnostic Network, you're going to see that about half of the problems they're talking about have to do with programming, yeah. like they program a car and it won't start. Or they pretty I'm sure that stuff costs a lot of money, too. Yeah. But, you know, there's guys that specialize. They don't have a shop. All they do is drive around and fix other shops' problems. Yep. Yeah. Mobile, which is cool because, I mean, you can, choose, you can pick your own hours. Yeah, that's cool. But I'll tell you, at least once a month, you're going to be there for six hours just freaking sweating hard, <laughs> you know, learning the new stuff. You know, it's just like yeah. we're doing with uh, Zoom, actually. <coughs> what do you think about those uh... – those battery tenders, when you do those hardcore programming. Yeah, they, absolutely. They really drain the hell out of the batteries. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it could be there for a while. Yeah, so what Scott Brown uses is he's got some really fancy 12-volt power supply that's like 12.000 12 volts. It's, yeah, people aren't using battery chargers anymore. They're using these 12-volt power supplies. Yeah, they're like good ones, like $600. Right, yep. That's yep, but that's it gets you a perfect 12 volt sine wave, too. Right, sine wave better not be. Is that your son? Yes, that's my son. Hi, <laughs> that's Richard. That's the one with the Subaru, right? Yeah, the Subaru owner. Yes, <laughs> oh my god, he's listening. <laughs> in. Yes, good. I'll make him sign up for your class eventually. <laughs> good. Yes, you need to. Yeah. <laughs> And you in too. the meantime, you need to be on the on these calls with your mom. Yeah. When we're on. Yeah. That's usually at work. You learn yeah, he stuff. Normally, normally worked until he got laid off, obviously, but. Uh. Yeah. Well, but now that he's laid off, he can join the class with you yes. during. Time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay busy. Pick up what he can. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, in in this environment, folks. A lot of people are going to be off work and there's going to be, mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to separate the sheep from the goats, man. 
because yeah. if you're not working, your ass should be on YouTube all the time, learning new stuff, learning new skills, learn Excel, learning how to Zoom. My question yeah. to you is, I've recorded this session. Can I post it somewhere? Yeah, you should be able to post it on YouTube. Yeah. On your hmm. YouTube channel. Yeah, because it comes out at MP4. Hmm. Yeah. You should be able to post it on your YouTube channel. Yeah, but then I'd have you without a shirt. <laughs> delete that I'd probably get kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> For life. <coughs> All right. Anybody got a <laughs> thoughts or uh because it's 903. Um, yeah. I'm glad I, I'm, I, I, I uh, scheduled this so that we could go long if things were going well, but I was really pleased. I thought tonight was great. Yeah, it was good. Good as it could be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good, Dave. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's good to be in class. Like I said, I'm not going to do office hours tomorrow. So, but, you know, between 1230 and 1.30, Monday through Thursday, you're welcome to come in. It's the same class code it's the same uh, um, password and we'll just be in here <clears throat> having laughs and trying to figure this all out yeah yeah arnold i'm so glad you're here still haven't heard from you but i'm so glad you're here <laughs> somebody's been somebody's been texting a storm up in the comment section <laughs> there's a comment section not me the chat oh the chat yeah yeah that's tomas all right, guys. I'm gonna say good night. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. What do you think, Chuck? I thought it was great. I just don't know how to turn it on or off. Well, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get I I'm gonna end the meeting, and then it's basically gonna go blank for you. Uh, if you can also hit the leave button up in the top. Top right. Yes, yeah, for phones. Or if you come down here to the little toolbar on the bottom, if you go to the three dots, it has end meeting in red. Okay. Well, or you'll just sign off and cut us off. <laughs> yep. Yeah.